Hey, it's Jeff Sauer here, representing Analytics Course, and this video is all about the bot. Specifically, all about finding and eliminating and troubleshooting the bot traffic that comes into your website. Now, bots get a bad name because a lot of times they are spam, spammy things that are crawling your website and doing things you don't want it to do, but sometimes bots are legitimate. Sometimes you want the bots. Sometimes you welcome the bots. And in this video, we are going to explore the difference between good traffic from bots bad traffic, and how do we either include or exclude based on those patterns. And so check it out if you want to learn all about the bot. Google Analytics bot traffic. So I love Google Analytics and all, but sometimes they miss the mark, like with their anti-spam efforts. Now you may or may not recognize this. It's only a scene from the greatest movie ever made, Godfather Part Two. Google's anti-spam efforts are like Fredo, the older brother of Al Pacino's character on the right-hand side. He represents Google's anti-spam efforts, sort of a underachiever, somebody who has a lot of promise, but ultimately gets passed by because they're sort of slackers. On the other side, we are the Don. We're the ones in charge. We are the kingpin, the ones who have risen to the top. And you know what, Google? You broke my heart. You broke my heart! If you haven't seen Godfather 2 yet, you probably don't get this reference. You probably don't think it's really that funny at all. But it's amazing. For those of you who have seen Godfather 2, it's an iconic moment. You just gotta watch it. But for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna say, not cool, Google. Now, I've been very outspoken about this in the past. I've made some suggestions telling Google that it's their fault that they're the only ones who can fix it, that I realize that nobody at Google is going to like me because I put this post out there. And Google's gotten to the point where they say, oh, Jeff's talking about spam again. Great. Just shut up, Jeff. And so it got to the point where I even started looking at other software. Instead of looking at Google Analytics, I was like, hey, I wonder if I should try something else. I wonder if I should hedge my bets because I've been putting a lot of eggs into the Google Analytics basket. Maybe there's other stuff out there. And of course... When that started happening, when the community started to revolt against Google Analytics, it started to get better. It's not perfect by any means. New stuff comes up. Anti-spam is like a whack-a-mole situation, but it has gotten better since then. But it doesn't mean that we're totally in the clear, because spam is actually only one type of bot that might be polluting your analytics reports. There's actually other bots that we may unintentionally send to our website that are causing problems as well. And one of our students in analytics course, Keith, who had a problem with an email that they sent out. So they sent the email out and received a bunch of clicks, but no action on the website. And now they see that a lot of the clicks were located in the United States, not set, and they didn't have anything about the metro, city, state, or anything. So basically, there's a bunch of junk that came to the site after sending out email campaigns. And Keith continues to say that the email was targeted at Seattle for Microsoft Corporation, and this is an anomaly because no other sites see it. Do we think that it's a narrow target for Seattle that's a problem with Microsoft, or is it some kind of bot traffic, some kind of weird things happening? And just wants to know, curiously, what's the problem? What's going on? And I want to know as well. So most likely, this is a bot. And I can say this just from experience, and I can say this by being around for a long time, but generally speaking, when you get a bunch of junk traffic not set, it's a computer of some sort. It's a computer program that's running traffic to your website. And I might be wrong in some cases when I see this, but I'm going to say in this case, I'm pretty sure it's a bot. Now, how do we know this? Because it doesn't exhibit human behavior. There aren't all these people sitting in Microsoft clicking on websites, trying to get at our data. Now, I, I couldn't tell of the 250,000 number that he put out there if that was all the bot traffic he's talking about or just saying out of 250,000. But either way, if there's a disproportionate number of people coming into your website that are junk, if it looks like junk, then it's probably junk. And we don't want this traffic in our reports. So what can we do about it? Well, there's Google's approach, which is a black box approach. And that is simply check this box that says, I want to exclude all hits from known bots and spiders. It's a all or nothing thing. You check a box and apparently it's all going to work for you. Now I've had this box checked on almost every single Google Analytics property that I've ever put out there. And I still get bot traffic. So does this work? Sometimes it does. I'd say 60% of the time it works every time. And when it doesn't work, there's really two forces at work, false positives and false negatives. 
meaning it doesn't always exclude what you want to exclude, and it doesn't always include what you want to include because it's a black box. You check a box and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So you can trust that it works, but verify. Trust, but verify. Trust, but make sure that it does what you need it to do. So here's how you can test your own bot traffic to see what the problem is. And you're gonna to wanna to try to do this proactively, preferably before you roll out an entire campaign, because if you do it too late, you're still gonna have that traffic in your analytics account. So generally speaking, the only thing you can do here is to try to proactively make your data look better for future campaigns. You can't really fix the past. So you wanna do it at a small scale if possible and then scale up once you figure out the solution. Step one, create a new Google Analytics view. Here's a new Google Analytics view. Be clever with your name, be very clear with what you're saying. So I'm saying testing against bots. Sometimes I put like XX, don't use, just because that way people know that they shouldn't use it and it's not meant for anything other than my test. These are all done alphabetically in your account. So if you do XX, then it goes to the bottom and people are too lazy to even look at it. So sometimes I'll do that depending on what type of company I'm working with. Number two, uncheck your bot setting. So on this new view, don't check the bots, let them in. Three, understand your bot. So here's an example of me trying to recreate the Microsoft problem here. So I have Microsoft Corp as a service provider. As you can see here, 208 users, 208 sessions very high bounce rate, very few pages per session, two seconds on the site. So honestly, this Microsoft Corp is not really doing it for me. It's not something that's good traffic. It looks like a bot, it smells like a bot, and it's wasting my resources because they're not going to any more pages and it looks nothing like other behavior. It looks nothing like other people who come to the site. Bounce rate's much higher, pages per session are much lower. I'm calling it a bot, even though it doesn't have all the properties of a bot because usually bots have 100% bounce rate and one page per session. But either way, it looks like junk. So you're gonna wanna develop a filter pattern. And in this case, we're gonna do a exclude for ISP organization, and I'm gonna try looking at Microsoft Corp to see what happens there. So I put that into my exclude field. Now, since it's an ISP and not an IP address, you can actually verify this filter and see if it's doing what you wanna do. So in step five, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna verify our filter. And in this case, it looks like it should work. Microsoft Corp used to be in there, now it's gone. Same with Microsoft Corporation. Now, if you don't want Microsoft Corporation taken away, but you do want Microsoft Corp, then what you're gonna to wanna to do is be very specific with your definition to say it has to exactly match Microsoft Corp. And then six, check to see if it works. And in this case, I'm gonna advise you to be patient and keep on checking. It's either gonna work on your first try within a couple days, maybe a couple weeks, or you will need to try a different approach. And that's the life of an analyst, I guess. We are always trying to make things better. We are always trying to improve the data quality we have. But a lot of times it's waiting, waiting for the data to come in, waiting for statistical significance to take us to that promised land. And if you're curious as to what that cycle should look like for reviewing your data quality, I think it goes like this. Start with analyzing your traffic. Within that traffic, identify your anomalies, determine the cause of those anomalies, implement a fix, document your flaws, meaning put annotations in your account, and then analyze that traffic again, a day, a week, a month later, and see if those improvements have taken hold. And that's a visual of what we all must do as analysts to get high quality data. And that's really what we did in this video here. Hope you enjoyed it. And I look forward to sharing more tips with you in our next video.